Ciao a tutti e benvenuti in questo nuovo video, oggi siamo qua di nuovo con lui, lo so, vi sto viziando un pochino troppo, eh, però ehm, quando papà avevo parlato dell'idea di questo video, era, tu, moltissime persone volevano che io facessi questo video, quindi alla fine ho deciso di fare anche questo video, vi avverto subito, questo, questa volta sono stata molto brava e ho fatto i sottotitoli, quindi potete semplicemente attivarli andando ehm, nella parte dei sottotitoli lì sopra o sotto, non ho la mia idea dove siano i sottotitoli, potete attivare per quando parla lui effettivamente. Quindi cosa faremo oggi? Oggi faremo un video sulle api perché eh, non lo sapete probabilmente perché non l'ho mai detto, ma lui ha lavorato due anni, two, two, two years? Yeah. Eh, per, ha lavorato per un anno come guida eh, turistica in una eh, mieleria che si chiama oltretutto Luna di Miele <ride> che è molto romantico um, e quindi sa un sacco di cose sulle api siccome un giorno quando siamo andati in vacanza insieme cioè siamo andati a fare un weekend fuori e abbiamo iniziato a parlare di queste cose lui mi ha raccontato un sacco di cose e pensavo che fosse interessante anche per voi saperlo e ovviamente ha... cioè e ha comunque connesso molto la sostenibilità quindi avevo chiesto eh, se avevate delle domande mi sono salvate le domande e quindi per non fare il video troppo lungo perché se gli lascio eh, parola libera a lui parlerebbe tipo 5 ore però ho delle domande specifiche quindi eh, se per caso dopo questo video avete altre domande avete altre curiosità mh, magari possiamo fare una parte 2 o possiamo semplicemente rispondervi nei commenti quindi io adesso andrò a cercare le domande che mi avete fatto sia su Instagram sia su eh, Twitter Uh, e farò ovviamente gli tradurrò la domanda e poi lui risponderà da lì first question um, what is the average life of a, of a bee? Uh, the average lifespan of your typical honeybee worker so the female is actually six months total if it's during winter time so that's the longest that they can go because obviously in winter they live Uh, much longer because they don't work as much but during the summer season it's only three months mm. nice. because they work very very hard oh. uh, do they fight between them as ants do? Um, they can fight in some instances because you have to know that uh, honeybees are very protective but they don't fight within the same hive so they can fight with other bees from other hives for mm. example if you have bees that come to try to invade your hive or to come and steal some of your honey, of your nectar, then they can fight. But it's quite rare. Okay, so they're nice. Yes. The other question is why they are yellow and black? <laughs> This is a very interesting question and it is actually a mistake that is very, very typical because you will find if you see on, uh, on the web, if you actually search, that bees are not yellow and black. Wasps are yellow and black, and wasps are mean. <laughs> wasps want to kill you. But bees are actually orange and black, which is actually a big difference that almost nobody knows. So you really have to know that kind of thing. But, um, another last question, it's um, how much can like uh, one bee produce of honey in one hour? In one you hour, can, you can it's, put it like in his palate. Yeah, in one hour, you will find that they produce nearly nothing to nothing, depending what's their work in the hive. Mm -hmm. But during their lifetime, which is about three months that I explained of actual work, a honeybee will produce about the size of their body. So mm -hmm. if you translate into our measurements, it's about one to two drops oh, of honey. Drops, so okay. it's extremely minor. Mm, okay. So that's why you need a lot of them. Mm. Uh, the next question is pretty, pre I think you can answer very general, but still, um, the, the girl says, I don't know if Lou is informed about that, about the production of honey, but I'm very curious about how the um, beekeepers are treated and how, what are the conditions or how, how they work. Mm -hmm. And if the, the quote without the beekeepers, the bees wouldn't be protected. If it's true or if it's just like bullshit, like they would say, like with, okay. with cows, like if we don't kill the cows, we're gonna have too many, no? <laughs> so you have like two questions in one, and it's quite difficult to explain because there's a lot to say about it, but you have to understand that beekeepers are always uh, workers who work on their own, so you're never going to have a big company, except if you go in countries like China, Argentina, who are massive produ producers of honey, it's always little farms with little local businesses 
So um, they work pretty much their own hours, but it is a very, very difficult job. Usually that does not pay very well and requires a lot of work. So usually honey farmers are going to be very, very passionate people. Okay, so who do this it's job. mostly love. <laughs> it's mostly you do love it. For bees. You do it because you love it. Because it does not pay well necessarily. Okay. And bees, uh, well, the you other have to thing know is that, like without you know, bees, like without the bee worker, would the bee survive? They would. They would, but uh, depends where. First of all, because for example, here in Canada, the climate is a bit too cold. It's a bit too harsh. So the bees wouldn't actually survive during winter if we didn't have uh, bee okay. farmers. Mm. So you wouldn't have bees in Canada whatsoever. In Europe you would have some, but it's different because they would go pretty much wherever they would want and you wouldn't get uh, the success that you have with the farming because usually honey farmers are going to get paid by farmers to actually go and place their hives for a little while there so they can pollinate the area. Whereas if it was just natural, they would go wherever they want, well, which would not be very good for the agriculture. Okay, so the still we need like beekeepers, like. And they are very useful for okay. our system. Yes. Okay. Uh, I received two questions about uh, honey and veganism. Mm -hmm. So one it's like uh, one question was like honey versus veganism, and another it's like uh, um, if you're vegan, can you eat honey? That that's a, that are two questions. Like you can say what you think after I'm gonna say what I think. Okay, so first of all, if you're be if you're vegan, can you eat honey? The answer is no, no, <laughs> no, because <laughs> the animal works to create this product, and technically, if you look at uh, the system, whereas in honey is created, it's going to be the nectar of the flower which is ingested by the bee, and it's transformed within the body, and then it's re-evacuated again, and that's where Honey is created. So, so in a way, honey is bee? in a way, it's another kind of produced by an animal. So it's the same thing as an egg or milk. Okay. Okay. Well, I uh, can I can answer in Italian. Sure. Okay. Io risponderò in italiano. Ovviamente, come ben sapete, io sono vegetariana, ma mi sto avvicinando al veganesimo e ovviamente sono d'accordo con lui nel fatto che se sei vegano solitamente non mangi um, alimenti animali di alcuna origine. Uh, so che il miele può sembrare una cosa molto, come dire, uh, molto innocente perché del miele non, non c'è stato ammazzamento, sfruttamento, robe, però comunque è un prodotto animale. Uh, ovviamente se uno è vegano e si mangia un pochino di miele non trovo che sia una cosa oh mio dio basta ti ritiriamo la tua carta di vegano uh, rispetto a un vegano che dice sono vegano però boh, si mangia la bistecca una volta al mese cioè um, capisco che uh, è un prodotto che non viene considerato tanto però ovviamente uno che si definisce vegano totalmente solitamente non mangia questi prodotti però allo stesso tempo lo considero meno meno harmful eh, rispetto a qualcuno che dice sono vegano però magari o si mangia il pesce o si mangia... cioè non serve per forza definirsi, puoi benissimo dire che non sono vegano ma mangio ancora queste cose piuttosto che dire sono vegano ma poi ti mangi dei prodotti animali uh, però ovviamente questa era una... credo sia fosse una più una curiosità perché... because there's a... there's a girl I follow on Instagram that she's vegan but uh, she collaborated with one farm of bees mm -hmm. and she decided to like uh, sponsor the honey so a lot of people like went like shitstorm to her because they're so like are you vegan or a fake vegan yeah. so like she was like I mean if you encourage local stuff like well because I think the the big big difference is that if you're vegan I guess what you're fighting for is the quality of life of the animals, right? Yeah, for sure. But the big difference is, whereas if you look in the milk industry or the egg industry, the animals are actually treated very badly mm. and their lifespan are shortened by it. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the honey industry, usually the bees are going to live better okay. and longer because the honey farmers take care of them. And if you actually look at the lifespan and if you look at the number of bees that survive or that are born the numbers are going to be greater and usually they live in the same or in better conditions than they would mm. otherwise okay. so are the bees treated well absolutely okay. so it's 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 different from other animals basically yeah and the fact that we're taking their honey does not cost anything bad to them because we replace it with a substitute which is okay. in many ways even better for for their organism 
So basically it's not bad for us to take the honey from bees until we like take care of them and we give them other stuff. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's that's interesting. Um, another question, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but it's like, is it true that the production of avocados can damage the bees? Like, I don't know about this. I know that avocados agriculture, it's, um, it's kind of bad. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of water, but I don't know if it would really like make something different to the bees. I don't uh, think. Honestly, uh, I mean, if you I use uh, pesticide and stuff like that, I guess like you damage the bees, but at the same time you damage a lot of other stuff. So it's not that just the bees. In this yeah, case. well, if the bees are sent in a production which uses very heavy pesticides and. Mm -hmm and stuff like this, sure it's going to influence the bees because there are animals that are very very fragile to that kind of stuff and it can actually mess up their whole environment mm -hmm. if we put them in ecosystems like that but is it specific for the production of avocado? I wouldn't be able to answer that mm, yeah. Okay, another thing, it's what are the roles of the bees in a, in a in hive? Okay, so you that's actually a very very complex question <laughs> Uh, first of all, you have to understand that in a hive you have three types of bees. So you have your typical worker bee, which are all female and consist of 90% of the whole uh, hive. Mm -hmm. Then you have 10%, which are actually the drones, which are the male bees. Mm -hmm. And you have one of them, who is the queen bee. Uh, the role of the queen bee, of course, she is literally treated as a slave and she works 24-7 to lay eggs for the colony. That's all she does. While the other bees take care of her, they feed her, they clean her. So there's no yes queen? It's like uh, work queen? No, you were, <laughs> you were. It's probably one of the worst. Like, uh, the worker bees, so the females, they actually go and gather the pollen, they create the honeycombs, so they create the inside of the actual hive, they take care of the babies, so they do everything else. And then you have the drones, so the male bees, who are actually about 10% of the hive, mm -hmm. that do absolutely nothing. It's very funny because they men, actually men just... Men are useless as always. <laughs> they actually just eat. That's all they do. They don't even fly out. They just stay there. They chill. Male bees are trash. And once during their lifetime, because they live about a year... What? They li even live more? Because they do nothing. Oh my god. Uh, so once in their lifetime, the queen bee goes and fly, uh, flies out of the hive and they, all of them go together and they go have sex with the, with the queen bee multiple, multiple times and then when okay, they... Okay, I have to put this video like <laughs> miners know. <laughs> and when they come back to the hive, mm -hmm. uh, the worker bees are actually making sort of a gate at the entrance. They let the queen bee come back in and all the males who are useless to the company are blocked there. <laughs> and they don't let them come back in. So they're forced to fly away from the hive and they eventually die of tiredness. We stun. We stun bees. <laughs> we stun so much. So it's very funny. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think bees are super feminist. We love that. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> they promote usefulness above anything else. <laughs> Once you're not useful, you um, go. <laughs> I mean that's 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 okay. Um, this is not a question, but they just say uh, it's just like um, statement. a statement that it's basically like I know that the bees are like uh, more and more in danger, and we need them since also because of climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know like um, about this, like how in danger the bees are right now? Or yeah, a... the bees are currently, and it's been it's been this way for about twenty years right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are in I think it's one of the species that is classified at risk of extinction mm -hmm. because as I explained there are a ton of pesticides that are used and it does affect the organism in a big way and there are also many environments which are hostile to the life, lifestyle of bees and nowadays if you look at the typical worker bee that's useful for us to create honey mm -hmm. um, most of them cannot survive at a natural state no. by themselves. So the honey farmers are actually very, very useful to that because otherwise the species would be near extinction right oh, now. Okay. So, yeah. And the, the question is like, what can we do to help them? <laughs> uh, like if we can do something personally to help them? Uh, like for example, if it's, um, if there's something that we can buy or consume that actually like, um, how do you say? 
that doesn't damage their habitat, you know? Like there's products that damage less their habitat than... Well, ultimately... So as I said, basically, if you want to help the worker bees uh, survive in the society we live in, it's really to buy food that is as bio, as pure as possible, because as I said, the greatest threat to their existence is pesticides. So if you try to remove as much as possible the use of pesticides by buying local, buying bio, mm. then you're ultimately going to help. And also you need to try to buy some, some local, mm. local honey, which is very different. And as a person who knows this, is way better than the kind of stuff that you would buy That's in the true. grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Because in the grocery stores, the honey is, first of all, sometimes it's also diluted. So with water, you're not buying pure honey when you're buying that. Mm -hmm. You're actually buying honey with a lot of water and some thickening agent mm -hmm. in it. So it's much of a lie. And when you buy something natural, of course, you're encouraging local productions and little producers, little farmers who mu uh, respect much more the environment. Now I have questions. We finished the questions from the other, but I have questions like super general. Like So first thing first, it's like this picture. I'm going to put you this picture in the yep. video. Um, this picture was like super much around the social medias and they even wrote an article about the fact that uh, cute bees fell asleep in the flowers. Oh my god, they're so cute and fluffy with their booty full of <laughs> no. full of poly. No. Is it true? <laughs> no, it's not true. It's not true whatsoever. And actually the, pe <laughs> the picture that you're looking at right now is not even a bee. It's a, it's a bumblebee, okay. which are quite different. Mm. Quite different. They're still nice. They're not quite mean as wasps, mm. but they're not the same whatsoever. And they will never sleep in flowers like this. Actually, the picture that you're looking right now is actually the bumblebee just going to collect the nectar, which on average is going to last about half to a second. Okay. So the photograph was taken very, very quickly and in no way whatsoever would a bee or a bumblebee fall asleep in a flower. Because Not gonna happen. Because they don't sleep in flowers. No, no. no. They sleep in their hive. In their hive. They, they never fell asleep. Okay, um, you already explained what actually... My, one of my questions was what is honey, you already explained it. It's basically bee vomit. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's not vomit, because when you vomit, it's there's vomit. production from the bile, which makes it disgusting. Whereas honey is good. Oh, okay. So you don't have the nasty stuff that comes on usual vomit. So, what do... Um, what do bees eat? What's their alimentation? So what's the alimentation? Well... Are they vegan? Um, no, they're not... Well... <laughs> it's are a they vegan? Well, I don't know. Um, I guess so. Yeah. No, they eat honey. Usually. They eat honey. So the food that they eat, they go and collect the nectar, they transform it into honey, they store it in the hive, and when they're hungry, they crack open the honeycomb and they drink the honey from it. But Typically, since we have a production where we take the honey from them, we replace it with usually a sweetened water, okay. which also contains, contains many nutrients that are useful for the bees. Okay. Yeah. Because another thing, it's connected to what you just said, it's like, um, there were like a lot of articles where they say like sometimes you can see the bees being tired, and they're like not flying so much, they're just maybe in a flower like resting, let's say so, and they say that it's good to give them water and sugar to make them like take the energy back but a lot of people think that that's very bad for them is it like true is it false I think can you give them water and sugar i think technically it could be true uh but i think they mostly say that to kids because i really don't think that a bee would actually come to drink your sweetened water they wouldn't really do that well because usually sometimes it's like you just they just say you leave your spoon somewhere else like somewhere like if you have plants you know you leave like a little spoon, sometimes maybe the bees are gonna come, they're gonna see that and maybe they go. It's not that you yeah. stay with the, with, the, with, the, with the spoon, like, yay! But what you need to know is that bees are extremely hardworking, mm -hmm. very, very efficient, no and usually they're not gonna go take breaks. <gasps> they go very quickly from the hive to the destination mm -hmm. and they come back. They're, they're Canadians, basically. They're just like workaholic. Uh, oh. oh my god. That's horrible, okay. Uh, okay, so um, another thing, it's like about the wasps. We said already we don't like the wasp. The only wasp, wasp we like is like from Ant-Man and the wasp, probably. But uh, how do you recognize a bee from the wasp? 
and um, do they die when they sting? Like bees, because bees die yeah. from when they sting? So as you said, when a bee is going to sting you, uh, its sting and actually its venom pouch is going to detach itself from the body of the bee, okay. which is basically the equivalent of if I remove an you an arm. So okay. you're going to bleed out and you're going to die. Okay. Whereas the wasp can sting you as many times as they want, which makes them way more dangerous because they're way more entitled to go and sting you because they don't care. Okay. When a bee stings you, they're going to die, so it has to be worth it. And you see the difference is quite clear. As I said, there is a difference in color. Mm -hmm. So the wasp is usually going to be black and yellow. They come sometimes in a few things. different uh, types, of mm -hmm. course. There are over 500 species of wasps. So they're yeah. very different. But typically the big difference is that you're going to see a wasp has no body hair. Oh. And a honeybee or a bumblebee yeah. are going to have hair all over their body. So you can see the difference fairly also, quickly because of that. But also the wasps are bigger, right? They look bigger. Uh, depends. On depends the on the type. Sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're bigger. You see how life isn't fair? Like, the, the wasps are the bitches, and they have more lifespan, they can sting you, like... How is this fair? Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, what about the bumblebees? Do, like, do bumblebees have hives? Or is it like bees? Can bumblebees, like, live with bees together or they're like separate like no they're never going to live together they are a different species mm -hmm. um uh, bees are going to live in hives usually in the natural state is going to be in hollow trees okay. they're going to go and build their honeycombs in there but they don't actually build an outside shell mm -hmm. to their hive so uh, they always try and try and find a hole somewhere okay. and build inside of it a bumblebee is going to build its uh, nest inside the ground so it's usually going to be a small in hole ground. in the ground, oh. which can be risky because sometimes you can step on it and that's when they're going to sting you. Or well, you can have a honey badger. <laughs> yeah, honey badger <laughs> don't give a shit. Snakes up in the tree. Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. <laughs> and finally, wasps. If you ever see a nest that looks like some kind of gray paper, okay. it's usually around and it's usually going to be attached to your roof or to mm -hmm. a tree then it's wasps oh my god because bees are never going to create an outside shell to their habitat ever so you're not gonna have like a, a hive next to your house basically no it's always like in never it trees, has to be in like a that. hole uh, somewhere in a hole. yeah in a hole like hobbit is. okay um another thing it's like why are there different kind of honey like oh very good question there are a ton of different kind of honey and actually honey is never going to be quite the same from one batch to the next simply because the honey is created and it has a certain flavor based on the flower that the bees are going to go gather their nectar from mm -hmm. so for example one uh, very very strong type of honey is made from buckwheat mm -hmm. so when bees go gather nectar from buckwheat it makes a very very dark and very strong honey mm -hmm. whereas if they go in clovers it's going to be much more light and simply sweet okay. so it's always very different what's your favorite kind of honey um, my favorite kind of honey personally if you want something a little bit stronger i really like a blueberry honey oh, so yeah. made of blueberry flowers it's very very good a little bit darker as well i never tasted them but it looks looks nice question uh, it's about beeswax okay um, and zero ways to have a lot of like beeswax like uh, we have also the, the little papers like mm -hmm. that you substitute to the plastic um, well you have candles uh, beeswax I mean it's used in other stuff I guess even in, um, in makeup stuff like that yeah how sustainable do you think is this like do you think that beeswax there's so much that we can afford to be like super communist rabbit and take the beeswax uh, or <laughs> or <laughs> it's better like to use substitutes because they're like coconut blends they're soya blends there are other blends that can substitute this kind of stuff with, without taking like the beeswax so what do you think about it I, I think beeswax is um, quite sustainable mm -hmm. uh, but you're never going to be able to use it on a massive scale like we can could never have any every company starting to use beeswax tomorrow 
simply because beeswax is once again much like honey is created from uh, the digestive system of the bee so they're going to create that beeswax it is an excellent type of wax which is much more uh, long-lasting than any other type that we yeah, have it also smells very very good and is used in so many stuff as you said it's totally natural so obviously it's very very good uses no chemicals mm. uh, but then again you can never use it on a massive well, scale well, was it Thank you very much for your super much explanation. Um, very good, very good. He's a teacher, you see it right away that he's a teacher. Allora, eh, spero che questo video vi sia piaciuto, mi dispiace se è stato così lungo, eh, però credo sia stato anche abbastanza interessante. Come ho già detto, se avete altre domande, io ho cercato di raggruppare delle domande che mi venivano in mente, le domande che avete fatto voi. Eh, niente, spero che questo video vi sia piaciuto, noi ci vediamo la prossima volta, ciao! Ciao. And if you have any specific questions that you want me to answer, you can even write them in English in the comment section and I will go personally answer your questions. That can giuro che be. non giudicherà il vostro inglese, lo giuro, anche se provo inglese, giuro. Fa, te lo prometto. <laughs>